We know that Generation 9 is based on Spain and the Iberian Peninsula. So what animals could we potentially see become Pokemon in Scarlet and Violet? I've got a really cool video for you guys. Let's dive in. Yo, whoa, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video today. And today we are diving into a handful of different animals that could become Pokemon through the inspiration of being a Spanish-based, Iberian Peninsula-based region in Scarlet and Violet. And I was expecting news today, we didn't get news, so keep your eyes and ears open on the channel, as I do think there might be some Pokemon news coming any day now. Maybe they hit us with the April Fools. We'll have to stay vigilant. But like the video if you guys enjoy it, and subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. We're closing in on 1 million subscribers, and I appreciate your support as we work our way towards hitting that incredible goal. So make sure you guys subscribe. It takes just a few seconds, and if everyone who watches this subscribes, we'll legitimately hit a million today. So make sure you guys do that. Seriously, so many of you guys don't subscribe. And it makes me sad. Anyway, we got some really cool animals to break down. I got a ton of different options here. We're gonna have some really cool fake mon art. I'll put them in the description below as well. So we can shout out all the designers we, we showcased today. And let's have some fun and talk about different Pokemon that could exist with the Spanish-based region. <laughs> Alright, so the first thing we're gonna look at is a Mediterranean Monk Seal, which is a Monk Seal belonging to the family Fosidae. It's believed to be the world's rarest pinniped species, and they're known to congregate, give birth, and seek refuge on open beaches. In more recent times, they've left their former habitat and now use sea caves for these different activities. Uh, we've got some different pictures here, different ideas. We've got this really cool fan art from Trainer Matt of what it could look like. Maybe, maybe Dugong gets a new evolution to represent this Mediterranean monk seal. Could be a cool idea. Obviously, we got seal and Dugong, but perhaps there's a new evolution or a branch evolution line. That could be really cool to represent this animal from the region. Now, this is one that a lot of people have talked about, and that's the Iberian lynx. It's a wildcat species endemic to the peninsula in southwestern Europe. It has a short, bright yellowish to tawny colored spotted fur. The spots will vary in shape and size from small round to elongate. Uh, its head is small with tufted ears, and obviously this is one of the world's most elusive cats. And many people speculate that Sprigatito is based on, or its evolution line will be based on this Iberian lynx. And there's also the thoughts of maybe the Smilodon coming into play, which is basically the Sabertooth Tiger, and there's some sort of hybrid between this Lynx and Sprigatito, Smilodon and Sprigatito, and what that could turn into. If Sprigatito ultimately doesn't turn into the Iberian Lynx, we will probably see another Pokemon, but I think a lot of people are, are probably right on the money with the Iberian Lynx and Sprigatito being linked up, no doubt about it. The next little guy we got here is the Red-Legged Partridge which is a heavy-bodied ground-feeding bird. It's sometimes known as the French partridge to distinguish it from the English or gray one. It's a rotund bird with a light brown back, gray breast, and buff belly. The face is white with a black gorget. When disturbed, it prefers to run rather than fly. So maybe it's not actually a flying type. And I've got this really cool fan art here from 100 Jams to show you guys what a red-legged partridge could look like. Generally a cool idea. And this is again just a bird from the location. Maybe it ends up being running, not a flying type. Could be kind of cool. The next thing we're going to talk about is something called the Mouflon. It's a wild sheep native to the Caspian region, uh, which is in Turkey, Armenia, uh, Iran, beyond. Um, and it has pretty crazy eyesight here. Maybe there's some sort of a tie-in to this and Go-Goat. Obviously, Skiddo and Go-Goat were located in the Kalos region, which is going to be really close, like, kind of just on the map in terms of where this new region is. So maybe we get some sort of Go-Goat evolution or some sort of new Goat or Ram kind of form. I think a lot of people are speculating that. I think this could be kind of neat, and uh, I wouldn't mind seeing the Mouflon imagined as a Pokemon. Another idea is the Alpine Marmot, which is a large ground-dwelling squirrel from the genus of marmots, it's found in high numbers in mountainous areas and uh, they're exceptional diggers able to penetrate soil that even a pickaxe would have difficulty with. We got a couple different ideas here like this Colossian Eradicate design, uh, this other little marmot design here from Dark and Windy. Maybe, just maybe, we get this little ground type kind of, uh, you know, squirrel dude. I think that could be kind of neat. He's kind of cute. I would, I would dig it if we got a little Pokemon like this. I think you gotta represent the wild boar, which is a species of wild pig native to the forests of Europe. That's so sick. I actually, I can't even imagine, like here in America, I'm not about to run into any wild boar out in the wild. I mean, I'll see like horses and stuff and deer. Not horses, just kidding. There's no horses. There's deer though. There's lots of deer. <laughs> There's no wild horses. There's some farms near me that have horses. I don't know why I said horses. Anyway, the wild boar, it's an animal with incredibly poor eyesight, but they have long straight snout. They have an inc incredible sense of smell. 
Uh, it's obviously uh, potentially has those tusks as well. We got some really cool fake mart here with uh, a rock type with like crystal tusks. That's kind of sick. The golden eagle is a bird of prey living in the northern hemisphere. Due to its hunting prowess, the golden eagle is regarded with great mystic reverence in some ancient tribal cultures. Uh, while I'm not expecting necessarily get an eagle, we just got Braviar getting a new form. You gotta represent this thing. It could be a really cool concept. Maybe they do a different type of bird. We know we're gonna get a regional bird, so they'll probably base it off of something. I don't know if it'll necessarily be an eagle, but really cool animal. Next, we've got the Iberian wolf, uh, which is found in northwestern forests and plains of Spain and northern Portugal. Uh, it's very different from the Eurasian wolf because it's got uh, its slender uh, frame. It's got marking near its lips and, and dark markings on its tail. It lives in small packs. And I feel like it could be kind of sick uh, in terms of this being uh, a new Pokemon. I, I think it's interesting to say that apart from the rooster being the national symbol of Portugal, many believe the Iberian wolf to be the national symbol. So the rooster is actually the national symbol of Portugal, but many people kind of give the, the wolf actually the thumbs up on that one. So... We'll have to wait and see. Could be some cool wolf Pokemon. The pilot whale exists in two species. There's a long fin and a short fin version. It's pretty difficult to tell them apart, but we could see little pilot whales showing up here. We got some cool fake mon art of that. Different types of whales. We've never seen a dolphin properly. We got Tapu Fini if that counts. And Gorbis isn't really a dolphin, uh, but maybe maybe we'll get their Huntail rather. No Gorbis, uh, but maybe we'll get a dolphin or some sort of pilot whale type Pokemon. The European Garden Spider is part of the Orb Weaver Spiders. They're the most common uh, group of builders of spiral wheel-shaped webs that are often found in gardens, fields, and forests. We've got a ton of spider Pokemon like Galvantula and Ariados, but there's still plenty of different spider species that have not been explored. And there is that spider web from the trailer that may indicate an evil team or some sort of a legendary, so I would not be surprised if we do get some sort of a spider Pokemon or something that utilizes webs as part of its kind of uh, mechanics. I really would not be surprised to see that. Next, we're gonna look at the Iberian Cross Adder or the Basquian Viper, which is a venomous viper species, which is uh, located in Spain, Portugal, and uh, this particular viper, there's a couple different vipers actually that in, uh, inhabit Spain that could make for really, really cool Pokemon. Uh, I think that there very much so could be a snake uh, legendary or a snake Pokemon. We've seen a handful of different snakes in the franchise. Um, obviously, Arbok being one of them. Maybe there's some sort of new uh, change to that Pokemon, some sort of evolution. We saw some Viper in the trailer with very high quality uh, scales and graphics, which looks pretty sweet. So maybe there's a tie in there. Maybe some Viper gets an evolution. Maybe some Viper gets a new rival outside of Zangoose, another type of snake. Always possible. Maybe Ekans gets a regional form, something like that. But I can see them utilizing this, uh, this Iberian cross adder type of Viper as a potential inspiration for a new Pokemon. This one's really cool. The Portuguese Man of War. It's a marine Hydrozen. I don't know if I said that right. That's found in the Atlantic Ocean and the Indian Ocean. It represents a jellyfish, but it's actually, I don't even know, Siphonomora? Siphonophorus? Uh, it's a colonial organism made up of smaller units called zoids. This is far beyond my biological knowledge here, but they look sick, dude. They look sick. They deliver a painful sting, powerful enough to kill a fish, and they have been known to actually kill humans as well. They look crazy, and I feel like a lot of people are speculating that there could be a Man of War type Pokemon just because of, I mean, this is the Iberian Peninsula. It would make a lot of sense for that to fit. I feel like there's a lot of likelihood that we do get ultimately a Man of War Pokemon. Like, we have Jellyfish Pokemon already, but this is a little bit different than that. I absolutely hate ticks. They're very rampant around here. I actually pay to have a company come and spray my property for tick control because they're so common around here. Not on the horses, on the deer, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, the Castor Bean Tick is a chiefly European species of hard body tick that reaches uh, about half an inch. Um, and of course, it can transmit bacterial and viral pathogens. There's no eyes on it. It has a hard abdomen. When we find ticks around here, you gotta burn them. You actually gotta take a lighter and burn them, man. You can't crush them, they're crazy. I always, always get so nervous. Obviously, I have a dog, I have a daughter. You know, try to watch out because we like to play outside. And man, I tell you, ticks are scary because Lyme's disease is no joke, man. No joke. I don't want to see a tick Pokemon. <laughs> Although it would be a bug type probably. Speaking of potential bug types, the European yellow-tailed scorpion. It's a small black scorpion with yellow-brown legs. And uh, it's got that big tail, of course. Uh, it's a couple inches long and could make for a really cool fake mod. Obviously, we have Scorpy, We have Drapion. It's not as if we haven't had some sort of a scorpion type Pokemon, but I can see them kind of reimagining and doing something a little bit different, maybe even giving them forms. I feel like Drapion would be a cool candidate for getting like a new form as well. I couldn't make this video without talking about the bull. 
The bull is the national animal and a very important cultural symbol of Spain. Its status stems from the popularity of bullfighting, which actually dates back to the 8th century. The most famous event, the running of the bulls, takes place every year in July in the city of Pamplona as part of the San Fermin Festival. We're almost certainly getting some sort of a bull representation, whether it be Tauros getting a new form at Evolution or them having a new Pokemon entirely. Um, and that kind of ties to the next one, which is the Rooster of Barcelos, which I've already covered in other videos, talking about Nando's and talking about the Rooster and how Masuda has already indicated that he wanted to do something based on a Rooster. But the folk tale of the Rooster of Barcelos tells the story of a dead Rooster's miraculous intervention and proving the innocence of a man who had been falsely accused and sentenced to death. The story is associated with the 17th century cavalry that is part of a collection of an archaeological, archaeological museum. Um, and obviously, this is a, a symbol that I think we're most certainly going to see. It's one of the most common symbols in Portugal. I think we're going to have a Pokemon based on the Rooster of Barcelos. It's just a matter of time before they reveal it, I think, at this point. Another idea is a fin whale, which is one of the largest animals to ever exist on the planet. It's deep in the ocean. Uh, it's actually majestic, enormous in size, but it's a very fast swimmer. Um, another type of whale that we could see as a Pokemon could be kind of sick. We've also got this little garden Dormouse, which has got, actually got the main habitat in the forest, but they are found in fruit growing regions in parts of Europe. They're primarily nocturnal, could have another like mouse type Pokemon. Maybe this is the inspiration for the Pikachu clone. Could be kind of cool. The Iberian Midwife Toad, uh, which is very much so interesting because it actually, the males actually carry the fertilized eggs on their back, which is very unique. There's a couple different types of midwife toad, but the Iberian one is separate because it's endemic to the peninsula and they're small in size. They got a plump and rough looking body. And I feel like that concept is very interesting. The fact that these toads actually carry the eggs on their back, the, the, the dude does the heavy lifting on that one, which is pretty wild. I'm gonna butcher this. Cucugus cinnabarinus is a species of beetles. The flat bark beetles, they're native to Europe, most, mostly in Central Europe. Uh, but they do appear in southern or western europe as well they live under tree bark they're pretty unique looking i think there's always a good amount of inspiration for potential bug types and i'm always down for those you know i love to see me some bug types moving to different types of lizards we got the genie's wall lizard uh it's pretty interesting also located in the iberian peninsula uh the lizard's name is actually derived from latin because color turning from a usual brown to green during the spring so it's actually got a nice little color changing thing uh, they've actually been used in studies on lizard body temperatures to determine accurate methods of reading lizard body temperatures using non-invasive techniques. So some fun facts there. We also got the sturgeon, uh, which is a fish that was very abundant in the Spanish rivers. Like salmon, these lived in coastal areas. Uh, they go upstream for reproduction. This is a pretty interesting idea, a sturgeon fish-based kind of animal that could be a thing. We talked about a lot of different things uh, in terms of, you know, the, the rooster. We talked about the bull. Tons of different animals, tons of different potential for what could be in this game. And last but not least, I think we got to look at the Spanish coat of arms, which features a, a red crowned lion on the coat of arms. So I think that there's always a chance that there could be some sort of representation of a lion just because it is on the coat of arms. <laughs> So this video was a ton to make, kind of researching and going through different animals and species that are native to the Spanish and Iberian Peninsula uh, that could be inspiration for the upcoming Pokemon games Generation 9, Scarlet and Violet. If you enjoyed this one, be sure to hit that like button down below and of course subscribe to the channel if you guys are new so you don't miss out on our epic Pokemon content here, Scarlet and Violet and beyond. And if you have any suggestions or ideas of potential animals that could become Pokemon for the upcoming games, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. My name is Dan. I also go by A Drive, and I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.